Hey, Steve Zook here. Welcome back to Folks Who Channel and the Guitar Ladder System. I'm really having fun. This is really a nice sounding 350. It sounds really good unplugged. Here, here it is plugged, actually. But you, it's, you're probably going to hear more acoustic tones because I just have the amp barely up. See, I love that combination of a little bit of amp and, and uh, at least half or more of the acoustic quality. What I want to talk about today uh, is is theory that that would be helpful to you. Now I have some pretty strong opinions on this, um, not because I think I'm a know-it-all, but just because of my experience teaching hundreds of students and, and thousands online with my guitar ladder system. It's good to know certain theory. What where theory gets in the way is when you you think only theory and you just think very left brain and you put music and art in a box. I can, I can always tell when people send me their music and if they're just really by the book, it sounds really stiff. Music and the way the chords and scales go together is more like shades of color that maybe a graphic artist would use. And, you know, like when you get paint together and you can mix different shades of red or different shades of blue and mix it with other colors. To me, it's even great musicians and composers like John McLaughlin say that, you know, any chord can follow any chord. If you stick to just strict diatonic harmony, it gets really boring. And uh, great music is a combination of, of different types of improvisation. So I want to talk a little bit, though, about theory that, that, that could be helpful to everybody. And if you're interested in my guitar ladder system, you can order at stevezookguitars.com. It's 240 studies with a chart and a video for each one, but I don't send it all at once. But let me just get to this. So theory that's good to know is, for instance, uh, like, you know, basic chord construction. And I'm not going to go into triads right now because that's the most basic. But for instance, major seven chord. And I'll do piano voicing. One, three, five, seven. But get to know... The color of that chord, see that that's a major seven, okay? Now here's the same chord but in a different voicing, and that's what makes chord have chords have an interesting color, is the voicing, which means the way that the one, three, five, seven, and that just comes from the major scale. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, from there, from eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen. So here I have a major seven, but it's voiced one, five, seven, three. And that's from the C major scale. And the major scale is a series of you know two whole steps, a half, and three holes. And then uh, now I have this guitar. I have I have this guitar tuned a little low, so that's probably why you heard that one note. But it plays fine. I just I'm kind of digging the sound of it. I, I like how it sounds low. It'll probably you know obviously will should probably be a little higher to concert pitch uh, for the way it was set up. It'll be fine. But I just. I'm just kind of digging. Anyway, so say so here's a major seven, one, three, five, seven. If it's piano voicing, it's like this, three, five, seven. Minor seven chord is one flat three five flat seven. Hear that? If I do a different voicing, then it would be most of us know this chord, right? It's been hard on guitars lately because it's, it's gone from like 55 degrees to 90. It's all over the place. Anyway, um, let me just tighten up a couple strings here. So a minor seven chord, we all know this form. That's one, five, flat three. I mean, one, five, flat seven, flat three, okay? Hear how the minor seven has a little diff different mood than the major seven. My mom used to explain it like major seven's a happy chord, minor seven's a sad chord. <laughs> Not quite that simple, but that, that will work for now, right? Okay, then you have a dominant chord. The dominant, right, that has a different flavor. See, the dominant chord, has a different sound, and the dominant chord is one, three, five, flat seven. Okay, and that's again in piano voicing, like in thirds. 
So that's one, three, five, flat seven. See that? But here's a different voicing. One, uh, flat seven is there, three and five. So this is what I'm saying is that it's really, it's good to begin to understand, you know, chord construction, uh, major six chord. Now this isn't piano voicing, but I've got one, six, three, five. Here the, and see that major, here's an A, major six has a different flavor than, than a major seven, but it's in the same family. You know, it's just like brothers and sisters. They have some things that look alike and act alike, but they're, they're still different, but they're in the same family. So the major seven and the major six kind of have a similar color. It's a little bit different, right? Then you have like 13s, which is one of my favorite chords. So a 13 chord, if you kind of strip it down to the basics, is one, three, five, flat seven. You can't play all the notes of this. That's what's so great about playing piano, because you can you can get more you know, notes of, of the chord and mess with them more. But you know the, the essential notes are one, three, five, flat seven, nine, uh, eleven, and thirteen. But you can't play all those at once, right? But okay. So if you do a form like this. I love the 13 chord. You're playing one, three, flat seven, nine, 13. And you could even just play, get that same. I can do it like this. Here I'm adding the. Uh, here I'm adding the ninth and the top string. You can cycle those too. That's a nice little way to work 13s. Nice little cycle going. Some people say you can get the color of the chord with just the third, the flat seven, the ninth. Like I can do a non root form like this. So you see, that's what, like when I, a lot of times when I warm up the video, I'll do that. Okay, you can do like a dominant, dominant, and again, notice how the 13 has a different sound than like a major seven. The, the dominant is, is uh, a little bit more of a, a higher tension. It wants to resolve, wants to go somewhere, wants to travel, wants to link up. That's why this sounds so cool, right? 13 to 13. Okay, and then you have like the dominant 11 chord. I like to go to the third like that. So here, the, here I'm doing it in this form. It's not a piano voicing, it's not on third. So root, flat seven, three and 11. If you do what Ted Green does, you get the 13 on the side of your finger here. So see, here's the 11, or I could come down to another third, to a third here. Or I'd get the, so there, like I said, you gotta get that other note on the side of the third, the side of your first finger. That one, by the way, resolves really nicely, doesn't it? So you get some contrary motion. Uh, resolves nicely to the, to the minor major, I'm, not, I'm, I'm sorry, a bi, a bi chord, which is this chord, which is a minor seven and a major nine at the same time. So hear that again, you get the... Isn't that good? Lots of places you can go. So, and, and like I said, beginning to learn a little bit about tonal centers, like, but you just, my point though, is that you don't want to uh, become married to just diatonic harmony. It gets really boring really quick. You can use it, but even when I used to study with Horace Hatchett, he used to talk about he'd be playing standards and then he'd just start changing chords left and right and adding shading and taking one chord and adding a few more to it to kind of stretch it out and, and add shading. So. Diatonic harmony is fine, but it only goes so far unless you're Bach, you know? And then, and then he doesn't always stick to the rules either. The rules are bullshit, basically. It's good to, it's kind of like Miles Davis said, 
learn as much as you can about music, forget all the bullshit and just play and write, you know? But that's where it's so important, like the guitar letter system, to bring out your musical ear, to get in touch with your musical mind, to feed your musical ear, to make your musical ear hungry, and begin to discover your own unique musical ideas deep within your subconscious mind. So, you know, tonal centers are good to know. You know, there's certain basic, like in, in diatonic harmony, you know, this. One is major, two is minor. Three is minor, four is major seven, um, five is dominant, six is minor seven, seven, minor seven flat five, and major seven. But again, if you stick with that, if, you know, for, for all of your thinking, you're gonna get really boring really, really quick. There's so many other different systems, you know, there's intervallic like. But again, in the guitar ladder system, you don't have to think about any of this stuff. You just do the studies and I'll expose you to those nine or ten systems, but I do it on a subconscious level. I do it for by feeding your musical ear, not by getting into an hour and a half rap about each thing, because I don't want you to get into a box. I'm trying to get, I'm, I've discovered a way of learning that greatly, greatly accelerates the process by not putting you in a box and not training your mind to think in terms of a box or formulas, but by exposing your mind and your musical ear and your subconscious mind to these different colors and attention and resolution and ways to create different moods and how to learn the language of music through chordal improvisation. That's huge. Chordal improvisation is the magic key to huge growth. Even Joe Pass said that when I used to take from him. So, uh, now I may have not, okay, the diminished chord, which repeats itself every minor third, okay, and it really demands, it really demands resolution. I'm just messing around. That's what's so cool about the guitar ladder system. It's 240 studies, chart and video for each one. I don't send it all at once, but if you do the guitar ladder system, it's only $199, it's thousands of dollars of material. But if you do it, all of a sudden, you'll be playing one of my studies and you'll just take off. You won't even know where you're going, but you just let it go. And all of a sudden, you'll start discovering musical ideas you didn't even know you had. But, um, you know, I was talking about the diminished. So the diminished is kind of interesting. It's a root, uh, root, flat three, uh, flat five, if you look at the diminished chord, it has this kind of sound. It's a very high tension chord. It really demands resolution. There's low tension chords and there's high tension chords. Low tension chords, you, you can hang on all day. I was in the mood for a burger. Might get some fries. Okay, <laughs> silly, I know. Uh, whereas the diminished chord, it really wants to resolve, okay? So the diminished chord has a root, flat three, flat five, and a double flat seven. So now I know I'm not playing in piano voicing, but here, here's the root, here's the flat five, here's the double flat seven, and a flat three, okay? So. But anyway, so that's, and so that's the diminished. And like I said, it, it repeats itself every minor third, which is one and a half, okay? And, and I like to do the, di a great way to practice is do a chord and do the arpeggio. The arpeggio that goes really good ear train. And you can do that with any chord. So I'm not covering all of it here, but I'm just talking about some of the basic theory that's good to know. There's also like, there's a big subject. There's, there's you know, intervallic improvisation, moving chords and perfect force, you know. But, but again, if you get hung up on any of this, it's gonna slow down your growth. That's what's so powerful about the guitar letter system. I teach the unconscious mind, which is extremely powerful. I've sold my course to people with master's degrees in music that said, Steve, I'm in a box. I can't improvise, I can't compose. Um, it's just an amazing thing. It's, it's, a, it's how you practice and what you practice has a huge effect on your growth. If you're always playing this, and by the way, the guitar letter system is not genre specific. It's not just a jazz course. It's, it's a course on total improvisation, which will feed your musical ear for all styles. If you want to hear some of my, the different styles I cover, go to stevezook, the number one dot bandcamp.com. Listen to some of my music and stevezook, the number one dot bandcamp.com. If you want a free study, from me, um, hit me up, Steve Zook, the number seven, not spelled out, Steve Zook seven at yahoo.com. I don't have time to chase everybody though. 
Some people email me for a study. Sometimes they say, oh yeah, I can really see you're doing something great and I never hear from them again. I don't have time to send you four or five, six little drip emails like a lot of people do. If you really, really love guitar and you really, really love music, what I have is the real deal, folks. I've got over 40 years into it. If you really want to experience some strong musical growth in a very simple to use organic process with no note reading, no complex theory, order the guitar ladder system, you're going to be glad you'll get you did, I'll give you a six month money back guarantee. It's gonna work if you're just positive about it and don't overanalyze it. Don't try to pick it apart because it, 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 that's just gonna ruin it for you. But anyway, so so that was just some of the basic things is, is good to know. And it's really good to know like, you know, and I know I'm, I'm trying to make this simple because even Joe Pass said it's the idea, it's important, not the definition. So I can get, believe me, I can get really complex if I want and I'll lose most people except for the very, very advanced players. But the very advanced players know that at some point you forget all the shit like Miles Davis had and just play, just write. What I'm trying to do is wake up your musical mind, wake up uh, the artist within, help you discover your musical ideas with your unique musical point of view buried deep in your subconscious mind. I don't know if you've ever heard music when you're dreaming, but that's kind of a good example of what I'm talking about. But like, say something like here. Now I could stop and analyze this because I've got like, you know, a C sharp and an F sharp, you know. So obviously, uh, a D major scale has the F sharp and the C sharp. But again, you want to expose your, your musical mind to the 10 different systems of improvisation through the chordal work of my guitar ladder system. And it's gonna not help you if, you if you stop and pick this apart and start looking for ways to define it and put it in a box, it's just gonna slow you down. You, you've gotta let go of the control, folks. Art is different. You've gotta let go of the control. You have to explore your instrument. You have to explore the different colors you can create, you have to explore a musical vocabulary created by putting chords together in beautiful ways that use these different techniques like contrary motion, intervallic improvisation, symmetry, diatonic, chromatic, you know, common tone. Um, and all these different systems are cool but again, if you're thinking in terms of a box and a system and you're putting your musical talent in, in a cute little thing, like an engineer, nothing against engineers, but they think, you know, one and then step two, three, four, five, six, seven, which is great for making a plane, right? Art's different, art's different. You want to expose yourself to these different ideas and the different ideas in my chord cycles uh, will present to you these ideas and how they sound and subconsciously you'll start processing all of them and comparing and contrasting at a subconscious level and people email me all the time they say steve i just started writing some new piece that sounds so cool i've never played anything like this let it present itself to you uh, my chord studies will present to your subconscious mind different ideas which you will then assimilate and they will take effect and you'll begin to reflect them in your writing and you'll have an absolute quantum leap. But according to the, according to the science of neuroplasticity, you learn best when you're not focused on results, which goes against Western learning, I know. When you just are positive about it, when you don't try to pick everything apart and try to put it in a cute little form, but that's, this is such a major point. I'm not sure if people understand this, but the people who are doing this system do, because I get emails every day for people having tremendous growth, but you want to focus on just the here and now, not focus on results. They've proven the subconscious mind has an open switch and a safe switch. If you don't worry about results, you just positive and get in the moment. But this, you know, my approach is my own unique approach, but the idea came from my studies with Joe Pass, people like that, and, and who said, you know, yeah, you know, you just want to have, improvise as much as humanly possible, and learn how to put chords together and learn how to create different moods and learn about tension and resolution. So my guitar ladder system is thousands and thousands of dollars of information for only $1.99 and it really works, folks. I've got 40 years into it. I studied four or five times with Horace Hatchett who taught Howard Roberts when he was a young man in Arizona. Howard Roberts started the, uh, used to be GIT, now it's Musicians Institute in North Hollywood. Howard Roberts started that. I studied four or five times with his teacher. So I mean that the roots of my system go back to some of the greatest guitar minds on the planet, but it's all my own original material. I do offer some Horace Hatchet, 
secret, I call secret files. A lot of them I've had to re-edit and kind of restructure to get to the meat and potatoes of it. But uh, this really works, folks. This really works. I mean, if you want to transform your guitar playing and reach a level that you'll never reach, you, you won't reach it without the guitar other system because everything else is kind of in a box. You know, it is in a box. There's, there's a lot of other good stuff out there, but it doesn't have the same approach. It doesn't teach the subconscious mind. If you need some of that, fine. But if you get too heavy into it, it's going to slow you down, or do both if you want, you know. But anyway, this oh, this guitar is available too. It's it's a really nice 350 solid. Uh, solid to carve top violin voice. I have it a little low because I just think it sounds cool. Anyway, that's probably enough for now. Here's cycle one. If you want to try cycle one, email me. And those people who've already emailed me for a study, understand I'm not going to chase you, okay? I don't have time. But, you know, if you if you really want to make some huge growth, you should just go ahead and order the guitar leather system. It worked. Folks, take care. If you want to try cycle one, email me. SteveZook7 at yahoo.com. S-T-E-V-E-Z-O. Okay, the number seven, not spelled out. SteveZook, the number seven at yahoo.com. Or if you just believe me, go to stevezookguitars.com. Invest in $199. I'll give you a six-month money-back guarantee. Just understand, you've got to give it a chance. If you just do a couple studies... And then decide, gee, he's not sending me, you know, 200 things all at once. It must not be good. No, it's not true. It just means I know what I'm doing uh, and I want you to absorb the material. That's why I do a little bit of a time at a time. I've been testing this stuff for 35 years. When you get a little bit of a time, a little bit at a time, your subconscious mind can absorb the material. OK, it really, really works. So, and this uh, this exact 350 really sounds good. Here it is not even plugged in. Listen, listen to this guitar that's not even plugged in and I'm just using a $100 uh, Zoom Q3. All right, folks, take care. Keep the positive faith. It has nothing to do with religion, just positive thinking. Be careful what you focus on because it expands. Take care.